look who's back. Ah, you ain't sipping me again. I'll feed you to the maggots. He's got an old score to settle. I'll give you a one-way ticket to Heartland. And the new stone to steal. Come on, Colton. Where's the jewel? He knows that I will not be denied. I'm on here. Michael Douglas, okay. Kathleen Turner, and Danny DeVito. <laughs> the Jewel of the Nile. Rated PG. Now showing at Budco's Palace Theater and other theaters. Let come roars for Christmas in your life. Every way you turn, you'll look spectacular in Liz Claiborne put together some Pomeroy's. Jackets, sweaters, blouses, skirts, pants. For Missy's, petites 4 to 14. For career, Liz Spectator. Casual, Liz Sport. And just for fun, Liz Wear. All the Liz Claiborne looks at Pomeroy's. Let Pomeroy's put Christmas in your life. Bill Rizzuto, how come your phones are always ringing? That's because at the Money Store, qualified borrowers get instant approval by phone on second or first mortgages. What do you mean by fixed rate? That means the low interest rate and the low monthly payments never change for the life of the loan. Oh, oh, oh a mortgage loan from the Money Store could make your holidays very happy. Call the Money Store and find out how low our rates are today. WPBI-TV, Philadelphia, serving New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Delaware. This week, the Jewish community is celebrating Hanukkah, the Feast of Dedication. In a moment, we'll talk about the origin and the customs of this season of joy. This is Perspective. I'm Linda Bunick. Candelabra are traditional requirements for the celebration of Hanukkah. For all of the eight days of Hanukkah, these lights are considered to be holy. And here to tell us more about the traditions and uh, the way Hanukkah is celebrated today are three people who should know. Meet them, please. They are Rabbi Mark Rosenstein. He is uh, the director of the he Akiba Hebrew Academy, and he's brought along two of his students. They are both seniors, and their names are David Kozlov, and Lisa Abrams. Not hard names. I don't know why I stumbled on that. Um, Rabbi, why don't we start with you uh, as an authority to tell us about the origins of the Hanukkah holiday. Okay. Um, Hanukkah has its origins in the, uh, the struggle of the, the Jews of Palestine in the 160s BCE against uh, the conquerors of the, Seleu of the, against the Seleucid uh, Empire, which was a split off of Alexander the Great's Hellenic Empire. Um, what happened is that uh, uh, an emperor of the Seleucid uh, dynasty came to the throne who uh, prohibited, uh, for reasons of his own, having to do with his own internal uh, analysis of how one should run an empire, prohibited the Jews from observing uh, the customs of their religion, which he viewed as a, a form of national independence, I suppose. And uh, uh, many of the Jews uh, cooperated and uh, collaborated and uh, gave in to the decree. Uh, but there were uh, those among the people who rose up in armed rebellion. Uh, there's the, politics in here. There's definitely politics in here. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the family, who were famous for having spurred and led the rebellion, were uh, a gentleman by the name of Mathathias and his five sons. Uh, the family name are variously called the Maccabees, which is more familiar, or the Hasmoneans, which is the name which is also known to many people. And over a period of several years, uh, they waged uh, what seems to have been a kind of a guerrilla warfare against the large the army of a large empire, and ultimately succeeded in uh, reconquering Jerusalem and rededicating uh, the, the, the great temple, the sanctuary. And uh, the name Hanukkah, in fact, means dedication. It's a modern Hebrew word which means dedication. Uh, and now the interesting, uh, an interesting thing comes along because we have a divergence, uh, or we have a, some stages in the development of the holiday itself after the historical event that, that, that spawned it. And this, uh, I'm, I'm done a little bit of homework. Are you talking about the late 19th century when... when not yet. Not yet. Oh, Even good. It's going to be a longer century. story. It's it's a longer story. <laughs> um, the original dedication ceremony, which was held in, in the winter, was seen as kind of a rerun of Sukkot, the holiday of dedication, which takes place in the fall. 
And so it lasted for eight days, because Sukkot lasts for eight days, and that seemed natural to the Maccabees to schedule an eight-day celebration of their victory uh, over the Greeks. Later, uh, after the, uh, uh, the rabbis of the Talmud uh, were uh, in control, shall we say, of the spiritual life of the people, they were uncomfortable with the holiday celebrating a, a human victory of our army over their army. And so they, uh, one could argue, essentially, they reinterpreted the origins of the holiday and downplayed the story of the victory and upplayed a legend that uh, the reason that the holiday lasts for eight days, and this is the famous story that every child knows, is that when they went to rededicate the temple and light the eternal light in their tamid, they only found enough oil for one day, and it would take eight days to get more. They lit the oil, and lo and behold, it burned for eight days. And that's the story and that persists today. That story persisted because that's the story that's reproduced in the Talmud, whereas the original story uh, of victory was in the book of Maccabees, which for many years didn't exist in a, in a Hebrew translation. It's not part of the no, Bible. But it's more of a Christian belief. Right. It became part of the Christian Bible, in Bible, fact, yes. right, mm -hmm. the Apocrypha. And it was really only in the late 19th century, and now here's the part that you did your homework on, um, that uh, the original meaning was resurrected by the, uh, with the resurgence of Jewish nationalism and the need to, uh, to inspire the pioneers uh, going to Israel in, in Israel with the idea of fighting for national independence and of rededicating, reconquering and rededicating their land to their ideals. And so the original interpretation became much more uh, common and popular and, uh, and important in the life of the people. And I think today we live with a mixture of the two. Is it a significant holiday? in the Jewish community, or is it um, a rather uh, not as, as big as some others? Um, there's de facto and there's de jure there. <laughs> uh, I mean, traditionally, it's a minor holiday. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the only holiday of any significance which is not mentioned in the Bible at all, and its origins are clearly post-biblical. And yet, in America in the 20th century, because it happens to fall at Christmas time, uh, it's kind of uh, been given, I believe, extra importance to give it equal time okay. or equal emphasis to the to our environment. And there's been some kind of conflict, and and by some people it's considered to be a contradiction that that it should be uh, brought to a level of the Christmas celebration. I want to talk more about that, and we'll bring the uh, young people into this discussion and talk about the significance mm -hmm. of Hanukkah to you. But let's take a break first. We'll come back with more perspective right after this.
on this perspective, we're all learning a little bit more about the uh, holiday of Hanukkah, and we've already heard about the variety on the theme. Now we're going to uh, come to our students, David. Uh, why is Hanukkah significant to you? Well, um, one of the reasons it's unavoidable is that, uh, like Rabbi Rosenstein mentioned, it does fall at the uh, time of Christmas time, and it has become a custom in Jewish families for the giving of presents at Hanukkah. So, as we're getting presents, um, you kind of are happy and you go back to school and you'll, you'll be joyfully telling everybody what you got and everything like that. And so it has taken on immediate significance in, of getting presents. Um, spiritually, it means to me at least, um, something that is a timeless story for Jews in that there was the, uh, the Jews were a minority here and we were being oppressed and persecuted. And because a small faction of Jews failed to, um, failed to give in to the pressures that were being applied to them, Judaism was able to live on. And I feel that um, in celebrating that, in a sense, uh, spiritually, I'm keeping that chain alive. How does your family celebrate it? Um, the eight, with the all eight, of the ritual? Um, not with all the ritual, but we try to keep uh, most of it intact in our household. Um, we have the lighting of the menorah, which is the candelabra that you had uh, pictured on in the, early, in the beginning of the uh, program. And we light that every night for eight nights, and we uh, sing blessings and recite prayers, and then we open presents. Is your celebration a mirror image of the David's, or is there more to it? It's um, basically the same. For our family, it has to do with family, because it's the time where we can identify with our Judaism, and which I think has to do with um, the fact that it has that it comes in during Christmas time, that Jewish students see the decorations and the way that the um, students celebrate Christmas, and then they feel, well, what do I have? And Hanukkah is what we're given, and that's why it's made so big. Now, in that way, uh, is it just the gift giving, and so that everyone is very joyful? that sets it apart from the other holidays, or is there something else, Lisa? No, I think it's a chance um, that students have to feel their identity. It's separate from, you know, you've got Santa Claus, you've got Christmas trees, and you, but growing up, uh, did either of you ever have the opportunity to experience both? You know, I know uh, Rabbi Jewish children who have the Christmas tree in their home, and yet they also have the uh, lighting of the candles. Is is um, that something that you know of as common? I think it used to be common. Mm -hmm. I know when I was growing up, I had I had friends who, who lived like that, and I remember my family used to get very upset about it. Uh, and uh, I have the feeling that that as perhaps the Jewish people in America have felt themselves more secure and more a part of the society, society. They felt less of a need um, so to do that. So you're saying that there's a message to children in, in, in uh, going along with um, other people's practices so that they feel included. Um, I'm not there, sure. I'm not sure that's what I'm saying. Is that, that not what you're saying? I mean, you know, if you have a Christmas tree, which is, which is called a Christmas tree, having mm -hmm. to do with Christ, uh, and you celebrate Hanukkah, I would think that's a very confusing message for young people. Oh, yes, okay. I agree with that. Okay. I think it is a confusing message. And I, I think what's interesting about that is it's ironic because the exact message of Hanukkah, when we talk about the historical yes. component, is a sense of, uh, it, was a it was a holiday of national pride and has, has become so again, right, in this century. And it's ironic that uh, Hanukkah should be the vehicle in America where, which often has tended to get lost because of the comparison or the mixture with Christmas, and that a family mm -hmm. should observe Hanukkah and Christmas together really contradicts the whole spirit of, of what Hanukkah started out with. Yeah. Hanukkah is celebrated within the family, as uh, David and Lisa have pointed out. How is it uh, celebrated in the community at large, in the synagogues, or does the school have any exercises having to do with it? Mm -hmm. um, first, I'll tell you about the school, although I'm new to the school, so uh, all I know is because uh, this is my first year in planning it, or being involved in planning it. But we do have our own celebration, uh, fun celebration, a party of some sort in school, a party in the evening with performances of some sort, lighting of the candles. Uh, there are traditional foods, which we can talk about if you'd like. Yes, uh, I'd like to. We also like to include in our school celebrations some sort of a service, a uh, component of service to the community. So we will be sending students to uh, a Home for the Aged to 
participate in their celebration. Um, but I think perhaps, m well, other than Passover, perhaps, uh, Hanukkah is a holiday which really tends to lend itself more to home observance. It is, as, as Lisa said, it's a time for the family to be together, you gather around every tradition that every member of the family has his own menorah, his own Hanukkah. It's not just one for the family. Mm -hmm. And so every child lights his own set of candles, and there's more and more every night. Uh, and uh, So there is that, that's the major pageantry yeah. associated with yeah. it. Well, we might as well get, get to the food of, of Hanukkah and uh, make everyone's mouth water. I wish we had some samples of it here. <laughs> what is traditional? Oil. Mm. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are various, in different ethnic communities within the Jewish people, there are different traditions, but all of them are based upon eating things which are fried in oil because of the miracle of the oil, which burned for eight days. Now, in our, I guess we interpret that as heartburn in our <laughs> day uh, for eight days. But... Uh, European, Eastern European Jews tend to eat potato pancakes, and Jews from North Africa tend to eat uh, donuts, deep fried donuts, jelly donuts. Okay. We're going to take another break. I did a little alliteration here because it's not only gift giving, but there is also guilt, which is expected <laughs> during Hanukkah. We'll give you a, a, a definition of that right after this. out of every three doors in America is a person with some form of mental illness. I don't know what's the matter with you lately. You can't seem to handle anything. It's been three weeks. Yes, I know Mr. Davis, but I just don't feel up to coming to work yet. All you do is sit in this room and brew. Just leave me alone. If you or someone you know is having trouble coping with life's problems, open the door to help. Call this number. Great heroes have risen in their time. Albert Schweitzer served his fellow man in Africa. Jonas Salk developed a vaccine to prevent polio. They were their brother's keeper. In our town, unsung heroes perform courageous acts every day. They are their brother's keeper. Going out for drinks tonight, be careful, because no matter what you do, there's a real good chance you're going to run into something. One of these. By the time you see it, we got you. You may have to take a test, a breath test for alcohol. So before you get behind the wheel, ask yourself, am I going to pass? Am I going to pass the test? Recorded, we have one subject under arrest, DWI. All across the country, our industrial base is vanishing. An estimated 100,000 are unemployed in the Delaware Valley. Factories are closing because of foreign competition. America's being left behind in the race for productivity and quality. 30 cents out of every dollar is lost to mistakes, waste, and warranty claims. In Japan, it's closer to 4 cents. Labor, management, and government must work together. Better productivity will benefit everyone. Our future depends on it. Um, we have Christmas time. We also have Kwanzaa now. By now you should know what Kwanzaa is. It's a, an African celebration of gift-giving time in the winter. And today we're talking about Hanukkah. Uh, and Lisa, the separation of the secular and the spiritual uh, celebration is something that a lot of Christians struggle with. I know uh, that I have. You, you want uh, children and people to feel the generous spirit of Christmas time. Is there that same kind of conflict in the Jewish community when it's Hanukkah time and there is this this um, uh, rededic this celebration of dedication and yet you have people saying bye, 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 bye <laughs> so that uh, so that the young people feel like I want my money and I want my presents and you know that's what it's time for or is the spiritual more important? A long question, I know. <laughs> I think that the spiritual is more important to me. I think a lot of students feel that um, they they relate Hanukkah with presents, presents and gifts, and I'm going shopping, and what did your mother get you? What did your father get you? But I feel that it's definitely more of a spiritual holiday when the family comes together, and it gives you a chance to feel your Jewishness. 
I guess you and David are relieved because most of the commercials and television and in, in, in the uh, media are directed to those who believe in Christmas. You know, they're they're always saying Santa Claus and and uh, of course you know buy gifts for Christmas, and they're not suggesting uh, that this Hanukkah uh, also goes along with this, but. How do you keep the balance? How do you keep in mind that it is a spiritual celebration, David? Um, just the fact that we're every night lighting the uh, menorah and that we are reciting prayers and singing. And as Lisa was saying, it's a time for the family to get together. I know that I can always count on seeing my great-grandfather and my grandparents and my aunts and uncles. And we will always have a meal. And traditionally, my family has a uh, Hanukkah party on the Sunday that is during the eight-day eight holiday. And 